We are continuing to present the works of the ancient authors that contain clear claims that the ancient Macedonians were not Greeks. Today we shall present testimonies from ancient authors who did not live on the territory of the present-day Balkans. One of them was Jewish and another was Roman. Agrippa II was a Jewish king and he was the last representative of Herod's great dynasty. He was born near the end of the third decade of the first century and was the son of Agrippa I. In that time, the Jews were under the Roman rule, although had some kind of autonomy. Agrippa II was raised pro-Roman and pledged for the Jews not to rebel against the Romans. In the year 58, he met the Holy Apostle Paul in Caesarea in person. In connection with our topic of interest, we will mention a part of one of his speeches in which the ancient Macedonians are separately mentioned from the Greeks. This speech by Agrippa II was noted by the most famous ancient Jewish historian, Josius Flavius. In the speech, Agrippa II convinces the Jews that the Roman Empire is very powerful and they should abandon the idea of fighting against them. To change their mind from their intentions against the Romans, he mentioned that other nations were under Roman occupation and still none of them dared to fight against the strong empire. Among the listed nations, he mentioned the Macedonians as well. What confidence is it that raises you up to oppose the Romans? Perhaps it will be said, it is hard to endure slavery. Yes, but how much harder is this for the Greeks? It is the same with the Macedonians, who have more just reason to claim their liberty than you have. So, in the case of the Jewish king Agrippa II, we have a very strong testimony in which the Macedonians are clearly displayed as a separate nation from the Greeks. Little is known about the Roman historian Lucius Ampelius. Even the time that he lived in is unknown as well. Some think it is in the second century, but most researchers think he lived in the third century. Ampelius was remembered for his work Liber Memoralis. It's actually a short general history, stating the earliest times and ending around the ruling of the Roman Emperor Trajan who lived in the 1st and 2nd century. In this work, Ampelius did mention the Macedonians and Macedonia several times, but he distinctively treats the Macedonians as a separate nation than the Greeks and other nations. In the 6th chapter of the book, we read, In Asia, the most famous nations are Hindis, Syrians, Persians, Medes, Parthians, Arabs, Bithynians, Phrygians, Cappadocians, Syrians, Lycians. In Europe, the most famous nations are Scythians, Sarmatians, Germans, Dacians, Mycenaeans, Thracians, Macedonians, Dalmatians, Pannonians, Illyrians, Greeks, Italians, Galileans, and Spaniards. So, we have a clear distinction of the Macedonians from the Greeks in here as well. In the same chapter, this ancient author indisputably writes that Olympus was completely a Macedonian mountain. Most famous mountains in the whole world are Caucasus in Scythia, Emodus in India, Libanus in Syria, Olympus in Macedonia, Hymetus in Attica, Targetus in Lacedaemonia. In the 10th chapter, 
dedicated to the empires, and Peleus mentions all the nations who had their own famous empires, among which, besides Assyrians, Mede, Persians, Lacedaemonians, Spartans and others, he mentions the Macedonians as well. In the 16th chapter, Ampelius writes about the occupation of Macedonia from the Romans that happened in the time when Macedonian king Perseus ruled. Before that, almost whole Greek territories were under Macedonian rule. Ampelius considered the Roman general Paulus Aemilius, who defeated the last Macedonian emperor Perseus and destroyed the ancient Macedonian state, as a victor over the Macedonians and a liberator of the Greeks a man who liberated the Greeks from the previous Macedonian slavery they were under. Here we read, Paulus was a hero to Greece, who managed to defeat the Macedonians, which brought him great fame. Every day he thanked the fates, because he successfully managed to defeat the enemies and their attacks on his home and land.